when scientists do research and publish the results of the research, the, the reason for doing that is to allow other people to use that information in their own work to apply the fruits of that research either in planning new research to test new hypotheses or in translating that information to help us inform development of new treatments for human diseases like cancer or Alzheimer's disease or, or stroke. But things have, have got more difficult. We've got a large number of compounds which appear to improve outcome in research settings, but when we translate them to human beings in human clinical trials, they don't work. So making sense of all of that information is becoming increasingly difficult. And the thing which is even more challenging is the sheer volume, the rate at which new information is produced. Uh, so something like uh, four and a half thousand new publications describing laboratory research in the biomedical sciences published every week. Uh, 52 publications every day describing in vivo research using animal models of neurological disease. So if any scientist was to sit down and try and read all of those, and even if they were only going to give 30 minutes to each publication, then by the end of the year they would only get through one third of the publications that had been and that had been published in that year. So it's really important that we're able to identify ways that we can maximise the value, that we can reduce the waste that comes from all this work which is being done, but that which scientists simply don't have the time to read. And it's not even as simple as that, because like anything else, some science is better than others, and it's possible to appraise the quality and the quality of reports of the scientific record of scientific publications through a critical appraisal of their reports of what it is that they've done, what measures they've taken to reduce the risk of bias, things like randomising the allocation of animals to experimental group, blinding their assessment of outcome. And so when we try and use scientific information to inform the development of treatments for humans, we're interested in two huge challenges. One is identifying all the information that's relevant, and the second is in making a judgment as to the relative strengths and merits of those different bits of information. Now, the tools of systematic review and meta-analysis have been used for similar tasks in clinical studies now for over 20 years, and our group have been applying these same tools to animal studies. But the problem is it takes a long time, and that long time creates a lag between when this useful research resource is created and when it can be used and implemented and contribute to future research. And so that's why we are particularly excited about the opportunities that data and text mining provide. And we are, we are optimistic that with the right tools applied in the right way, we can short circuit this process of research reuse of research application uh, from uh, years at present to uh, months and perhaps even weeks.